Um, you know, um, there are a lot of people want to push getting a vaccine and all of those things. And then when you hear a man of God talk, you want to push aside what he's saying as though what he's saying is not relevant. But I submit unto you that God is dealing with his church and that we have to be able to get through the weeds to see what God is saying. I'll put it this way. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. That's what's important. So in Matthew's gospel, chapter number six, I want you to get the Amplified Translation tonight. The Amplified Translation. You know, you have those iPhones, iPads, you know, those of you that have a, a real Amplified Bible, you can use that also. But I want you to pay attention to these words tonight as they go around the world. Matthew 6. 19, Amplified, read. Oh, okay. He just did a run-on sentence for the pastor. Okay, let's try that again. Okay. Do not gather and heap up and store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and where rust and worm consume and destroy and where thieves break through and steal. But gather and heap up and store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust nor worm consume and destroy and where thieves do not break through and steal. Now pay attention to this. For where your treasure is, there where your what? Hard be also. Now, let's, let's get to the nitty gritty and the reality of what's going on in the world today. This COVID pandemic have caused great economic crisis throughout the entire world. Oh, don't be talking about what the stock market is doing. The stock market is not money in your bank account. If that's the case, people would not be looking for what? A stimulus package. Thank you very much. They wouldn't be concerned about what kind of money am I going to get because Christmas is next week. Are you listening? Even companies who give bonuses and companies who normally bless people around these times, they, they're not doing it. People are uncertain about how am I going to make it to the next year. Food lines have increased. Are you listening? So the question would come up, does God really care about me? Does God really care about me? I'm glad you asked. Because in order for us to experience God's care, we have to tap into his way of providing for us. Are you listening? Now I'm going to go to, you stay right there. I'm going to 1 Peter 5 and 7. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, Casting all of your care upon him, for he what? For he cared for you. So God is letting you know right there, I care about you. I'm concerned about you. I'm a father. And because I'm a father, watch this now. God say, I care about you, but my provision for you was already completed since the foundation of the world. I have made ample provision in the earth realm for every single human being to be cared for royally. Everything that God does and everything that God has done, he's done it in abundance. 
Are you listening? God didn't do provision for a day or a year. Are you listening? Because God is an eternal God. And when God do things, God is not working from hindsight. God is working from foresight. He knows everything. Are you listening? He knew that 2020 was coming. He knew this pandemic would be here. But he also know, just like I raised up Joseph in his generation, I raised up a man of God in every generation to make sure that my bidding is done. So God says he begins, now you stay in the Amplified, you get the King James for me, in Matthew 6, 19, where it says, lay not up for yourselves treasures up on earth. So, so let's break it down. God is saying the focus of most people in the world is treasure in the earth. Are you listening? Treasure in the earth. I don't care what nobody say. Everybody wants the American dream. But God's dream is bigger than America. Are you listening? God is not trying to sell you a get in debt dream. God's dreams for you is to live an abundant life, free of worry. Free of, watch this, money worries. Lay up not for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and dust do it corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But notice this, but lay up for who? But lay up for yourselves what? Lay up for yourselves treasures, where at? In heaven. Y'all know, want to know why the treasures are in heaven? Because we have been made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Our provision comes from another realm. Our provision comes from another realm and it must be transferred from that realm to this realm. See, there's another realm that exists called the spirit realm, the spirit world. Are you listening? The things that we see in the natural came from the spirit world. We have made the natural earthly realm greater than the spirit world. Are you listening? The things that you cannot see are more real than the things that you do see. Are you listening to me? See, when people get this type of tenacity about the God that we serve, they will understand God has not forgotten about you. You may be in the poorest country or city in the whole world, yet there's hope for you. You just need someone to instruct you what to do. Are you with me now? Keep reading, daughter. But lay up for yourselves treasures where at? Treasures where at? All right, why would God tell me to put something in a place where I couldn't access it? But lay up for yourselves treasure in Heaven, where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now, um, we're going to drop down to the 24th verse, and I'm going to begin to talk to you about take no thought for your life. Because in the midst of this pandemic, I'm talking to people in the kingdom now. I'm talking to God's people. You will experience supernatural provision just as Joseph did in his day in the land of Egypt in a famine. Are you listening? Just as it happened in Isaac's day 
in the land of a famine. Are you listening? Just as it is happening today. Are you listening? Now, I wanted to read this scripture in uh, Hebrews 11, and we're going to read verses 1, 2, and 3. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, and faith is the evidence of what? Faith is the what? Come on, faith is the what? Say evidence. I'm not, I'm not looking for nothing new. Evidence, proof. Are you listening? Faith is the evidence. That's why when we're walking in this life, we must walk by faith and not by sight. Walking by faith and not by sight mean I'm functioning from another realm. I'm functioning from a realm that people cannot see. But that realm created me, made me in his own image and in his own likeness, and gave me dominion. Are you listening? So I should not be being dominated by life. I should be dominating in life. But I cannot dominate until I access this heavenly realm. Most people's mind is consumed with earthly things. Are you listening? Especially right now. And I know people are hurting. Are you listening? But God said, trust in me. Not only trust in me, you're going to have to trust that there's evidence and proof to what you cannot see. Now, faith is the substance. It's tangible. Are you listening? It's substance. And the substance of faith is God's word. The material of faith is God's word. Because faith, in order to access things by faith, we have to have instruction. Instruction in the book of Proverbs, the Bible said instructions is the ways of life. You need instruction. Instructions tell you how to access, what to avoid, how to build, which direction to go, how to make it happen. Are you listening? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Put that another way. Faith is the substance of things that God made promise to me about. Are you listening? And all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. All the promises are yes. You don't have to beg God for a promise. Are you listening? You have to know that when God made promise, the day he promised it, it was already fulfilled in your life. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and faith is the evidence of things not seen. For by faith, the elders what? For by faith, the elders obtained a what? Good report. Everybody who lives, conducts, and regulates their life by faith. Are you listening? You get a good report. Are you listening? It's going to come out good. Now, verse 3 is what I wanted to get to. Through faith, through faith, we understand. Pay attention to that. It's only through faith that we understand God. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. God blows your natural mind because God has an innumerable number of ways of taking care of things. God is not locked into no job. God is not locked into no government, but the one he established. And every government is backed by wealth. And God said, what government is there that's bigger than my government? Are 
Are you listening? Through faith, through following apostolic instructions through hearing, we understand. You do not understand nothing unless you follow direction. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the what? All right, so the worlds were framed by instructions that came from God. Are you listening? Read. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now read that out the Amplified. You stay right there. We're coming back right here in a minute, back to Matthew 6, because we're going to go to the 24th verse. I, no, I want um, Hebrews 11 and three in the Amplified, and I want you to stay in Matthew 6, 24 in the Amplified, because I'm coming back. By faith, we understand, we understand that the world doing, during the successive ages were framed, fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God. So that we see, so that what we see was not made out of things which are visible. Are you listening? What we see were not made by things which are visible. What does that mean? Things were created by words that were spoken that you cannot see. Are you listening? That's why all through Genesis 1 is saying God said, and God said, and God said, and God said. And then the Bible cheeky enough to come back and say, and it was so. Y'all don't want to talk to me. All right, now watch this. When are you going to learn that what you say, it is so? So if you don't like how things coming out, you must watch what you're sowing with your own mouth. All fear, doubt, anxiety, and worry is a product of what's in your mind and coming out of your mouth. Now, God began to deal with me and say, look, I know y'all in the midst of a pandemic, but I'm causing money to move. I'm causing supernatural provision to move in your life. But I don't need you trying to store up treasure in the earth. Now watch what I'm about to tell you. That does not mean you won't be wealthy. What it is saying to you is, get your focus off of uncertain riches and let's focus on the true riches. Because if you are focusing on provision, you have missed Matthew 6. Now, let's go through it verse by verse so you can understand why God is saying, I don't want you laying up treasure in the earth, on earth. Are you listening? I don't want your mind focused on earthly treasure. Are you listening? I want your mind focused on heavenly treasure that you can move to the earth. Oh, my. Now, you're going to see this clearer because I don't care who you are and how long you've been saved. Are you listening? It's different out here. And people's number one priority is to try to get things back to what? If there's no normal. Faith is the norm. No. Faith is the norm. For we walk by faith and not 
by sight. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. For we walk by faith. In other words, our lives hinge upon what God, watch this, had said and what God is saying. Are you with me so far? Now let's get to Matthew 6, 24. Amplify. No one can serve two masters. Say no one can serve two masters. So that means there's a choice involved. No one can tell me who to serve but God, and God gives me a choice in whom I will serve. Oh, God don't want no robot. God wants you to serve him because you love him. Thank you for your enthusiasm. See, God is not, I'm going to force you to do nothing, God. God wants you to, God said, I committed my love towards you and that while you were yet in sin, I sent my son to die for the ungodly. Are you listening? I'll put it another way. God became a man to give his life for men and knew that his love would cause men to respond to him. So no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other or he will stand by and be devoted to the one and despise and be against the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, we know that mammon and that's why we have to minister these things because the church is still stuck on sermons that they've heard in a traditional setting where people really don't talk about money much. They not only don't want to talk about money, they don't want to talk about eating right. The two things that we need right now is apostolic direction concerning finances and health. If it happens automatically, then why is the church suffering more than the world? Mammon is not just speaking of money. Are you listening? It's dealing with a spirit that wants to control the wealth of the world. All right, let me preach up in here. During the temptation of Jesus, the Bible says, Satan taketh him up to the pinnacle of a mountain and in a moment's time showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. The glory of the kingdoms of the world is the wealth. For every kingdom is backed by wealth. Satan told Jesus, if you will fall down and worship me, then all of this glory and the kingdoms will I give to you. If you fall down and worship me. But St. John 4, 24 say God is a spirit and they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. For God seeketh such. Y'all caught that? For God seeketh such to what? Worship him. And I have news for you. If Satan will give to all of those who worship him the glory of the world, how much more will God give to those who will worship him, who's not concerned about laying up treasure in the earth, but is being rich towards God and his kingdom? Are you listening? God is wanting you to sow seed into a kingdom that people cannot see. And
and reap the benefits in this earth realm. Because when your soul, that's spiritual, that's tapping into a unseen realm. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Are you with me? So we must deal with the spirit of mammon that's ruining the souls, the minds, and the wills of God's people. They want out, but they don't want direction on how to get out. You cannot function in this earth realm, in God's kingdom, not understanding that it is a seed-sowing kingdom. They got pastors all over the country who say they believe in this, but they do not constantly sow to nobody. They have no one they sow into, but they want to be sold into. Are you listening? You don't sow into somebody and want them to bless you. That's not what God said. Are you listening? So how can people be trained properly when ministers or the priests are not trained properly? Now notice what the writer said. You cannot serve God and mammon. The spirit of mammon have a voice. Are you listening? God has a voice and the spirit of mammon has a voice. That's that little voice that show up and always discourage you about sowing in the God's kingdom. But when you out, how come that spirit don't talk to you when you take a vacation? Or you want a brand new vehicle? Are you listening? Oh, he might tell you, you know, uh, well, I'm going to be honest with you. He ain't going to tell you you can't afford it. That's you. And y'all don't want to talk. Because he's going to egg you on to get it. Why? Because he know I can keep you war in worry, fear, doubt, and unbelief when I have you purchasing stuff you have not qualified for. So now you are in worry, fear, debt, discontentment, and distress because of decisions you made without consulting God and his way of doing things. So you cannot serve God and mammon, the spirit of mammon. You must make up your mind and see as we're crossing over, you got to get this stuff straight. I'm no longer dependent on a job. The job is only a place where I go to get seed. And when I get that seed, I need instruction. What to do with it? Y'all don't want to talk to me. See, this cannot be a message preached. This must be a message reached. It got to reach you right where you are. And as you apply what you're being taught, things will happen. Y'all ready for this? Quickly. All right, now let's read the next verse. Verse 25. Therefore I tell you, stop, notice this, stop being perpetually uneasy. In other words, stop all of that worrying. Why is it that some people are going to find something to worry about? Y'all don't want to talk to me. Why are you so full of worry and fear and doubt and unbelief? All of that is a product of the soul. So stop being perpetually uneasy. Anxious, anxious, anxious. Y'all know what anxious mean, right? 
God, if you don't come through tomorrow, I'm going to work out my own mojo. Thank you, daughter. Lord, you better do something. Anxious, full of anxiety. Y'all ready for this? Some people already worried about Wednesday. Some people have made it to Christmas because there's a lot of pressure being put on people about gifts. Now, see, y'all ain't gonna like it. Every year, year after year, around Christmas, people are up under stress because they deem material things to be the greatest gift when the greatest gift was God clothed in flesh and becoming a man and giving himself for us. Children stress parents out. Y'all don't want to talk now. I say children stress parents out because they have a list that they don't have to pay for. They have no concept of what it takes to provide them the lifestyle they presently have. And in this generation, because of the internet and Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok and Twitter, uh, amen, I might miss a few. Are you listening? Now listen to what I'm about to tell you. People are craving stuff. Y'all don't want to talk. Year after year, people purchase all this stuff in December and next year 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 and next year, year, they still up under what they charged five years ago. But nobody wants to address it because we have pushed materialism versus harvestism. That's okay, I just made up a word. My daddy do it, I can do it. Are you listening? Harvestism means I allow my harvest, are you listening, to determine my lifestyle. I'm not going to purchase a lifestyle that my seed didn't purchase. When my seed purchased it, no pressure. I convert from credit cards to cash. And children, this is the church day. Jesus paid for it all. And we're not going to come behind, but you got to do the principle. Are you listening? Read the text, daughter. Don't be anxious and worried about your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink or about your body, what you shall put on. Now notice the question. Is not life greater? Is not life greater in quality than in food? And the body far above? And more excellent than clothing? Isn't it? uh, You got to take care of these bodies. This is something that people want here. I want a vaccine. You want the easy way out. I love scientists. I don't, yeah, they know some stuff. But they done push some stuff off on us. Y'all don't want to talk now. God didn't make the coronavirus. That was man-made and man-released.
If I want to control you, I control you through fear. Are you listening? And I'm telling all saints of God, you follow all of the protocols, but at the end of the day, you have to go back to the original intent of God and eat your body back to health. And quit running to get a shot every time they say you need one. See, they got people to run to get the shot, but they won't run to hear this word I'm teaching. Are you listening? Some people just want a herb for the moment. Are you listening? No, God is speaking loud and clear. I'm calling you to go back to the original. You must begin to eat a lifestyle that pleases me. Okay. They already told you more pandemics are coming. This coronavirus is not impacting everybody the same way. So you must get your immune system on high alert because our bodies are fearfully and wonderfully made. And we shouldn't be worried about getting a virus and how long we're going to be out. We shouldn't be panicking every time somebody don't have a mask on. No, you don't have to cuss at them. Just trust your God to preserve and keep you. All of us have been exposed to this virus. Somebody say, well, I haven't gotten it. That's because God has kept you. So versus tripping, give God praise. Lord, thank you for keeping me in the midst of this pandemic. I'm sure I shook somebody's hand. I'm sure I was in the presence of somebody who sneezed wrong. I'm sure I was in the presence of somebody who talked wrong. I'm sure I was in a supermarket or some other place, some restaurant where it was full of the virus, but thanks be unto God who kept me. Nobody but you. If I could keep myself, I wouldn't need him. I'm not eating right for some show. God told me you got to eat right for health. Say, so y'all are strong on divine healing. But where is divine health? My church is full of sickness and disease. Why? Because they won't eat in the manner in which I say to eat. They have allowed taste to overrule nutrition. You cannot possess nothing in life without a complete shifting in the way you think. We got to quit just doing things for the moment and recognize that every day I eat wrong, I'm sick. It's only a matter of time before something show up. Then when cancer show up, now you panic. Now you won't put something in your body God didn't tell you to put in it. Trust a doctor more than you trust a God. The process to health is not a day. It's a lifetime journey. You, God cannot lie. And we all take the scripture and the Bible say all things are good to eat. When sanctified by the word and prayer. Well, yeah, that's, that's right. So I'm going to go get me some Popeyes and go on a three-day fast. knowing it's full of chemicals. I know y'all ain't gonna like this, but I remember eating Popeyes and my vision getting blurry. Okay. What was that telling me? Something in it that don't agree with your body. But y'all know what I was saying, right? She loved that chicken. <laughs> I ain't by myself. Yeah, you're right, it's the spice. Don't come giving me no plain mild. I'm talking about mild. I want no mild. I want the original. 
And I'm going to tell you all straight up, y'all might not believe it, but when Popeye's first came out, huh? It's way better than the quality they serve in the day. I don't know why y'all tripping. I'm 61. I remember when it first came out. I was at a football game, and when we left, they, we stood in line. So we got that chicken, and boy, once we got that chicken, she. From that day to 61, I had my way, but I had a visitation saying, that day over, you got to make some decision. Now, somebody say, what does this have to do with take no thought for your life? Everything. Because many people are worried about what? Their health and their wealth. That's the reality of life. Are you listening? And God said, I've done something about it. Okay, read the next verse. Now, God said, I want you to look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor do they gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father keeps what? Okay, well, why would the, why would the Holy Ghost why would the Holy Ghost put up there, look at the birds? What is God saying to us? During the course of a day, do you ever sit down to think, to observe? You never had no bird come, tweet, tweet, I want some me. Because God said, that's my creation. So I already made provision for them. They don't have a system of sowing and reaping and gathering in the barn. The reason God put that in that text for you is lay not up treasure for yourselves in heaven. I mean, you know, on the earth. But use my system of sowing and reaping and gathering in the barn. Why does God want you to have a seed account? So he can tell you what to do. God is not against you having a store account or a seed account because he just told you, lay up treasure in heaven. Y'all ready for this? But you do that by sowing seed in the earth. Oh, Y'all get quiet if you want. This is the way it works. Are you listening? Read the text. Are you not worth much more than a bird? Are you not better than a big bird with his yellow suit? Talk to me up in here. Are you not better than a sparrow or a raven or a red bird or a blue bird or a black bird? Are you not better than a pigeon wobbling? Read the text. And who, which of you by worrying and being anxious can add one unit of measure, cubit to his stature or to the span of your life? In other words, all that worrying you doing, what good is it doing you? I want you to know people are sick because of worry. People are not resting because of worry. People's minds are racing about provision. People's minds are racing every time they get up and have to go out. Who am I going to cross paths with today that might can impact me with this virus that I might die? Don't get caught up in a political thing. Tell me it's a hoax. I know too many people have died. And the good thing about being connected to me is I know what to do. Talk to me now. I say I know what to do. No, no, I know what to do. And I'm not sending you to Dr. Fauci and Sanjay and all of these big names from Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Columbia, and all of them places. No, I'm going to send you to the big G-O-D. Are you listening? You won't hear this coming across the airwaves. 
I'm telling you, food is medicine. And the minute you make a decision to eat right and put the right stuff in your body, now the supernatural that's in your cells will begin to take off. But it's a process. Are you listening? You're not going to eat right for five months and think it's all going to show up right. Took you 61 to get here. Are you listening? But I tell you what it's not going to take. 61 to get out. Can I give you some inside information? The minute your soul changes, it's over. Y'all see, y'all didn't catch it. It's the transformation. It's the renewing of the mind. It's revelation that manifests and bring forth demonstration. Are you listening? No, it's no longer if when you're sowing right. Are you listening? I feel God's presence. I don't know but you. But I'm not taking no thought for my life. Oh, Jesus. Come on, read, daughter. And why should you be anxious about clothes? I like, I like dressing up me. I don't care about y'all. I like looking good. See, people think, oh, my, that's, you know, that's material. I don't care what you think. I read the Bible how God decked out Aaron the priest. I read the Bible how Solomon, King Solomon, talked to me. How he was dressed and all of the people around him was dressed. The queen of Sheba took note and said, Solomon is a master dresser and all of his servants around him are master dressers. Talk to me up in here. Jesus himself was a master dresser. They cast lots for his vesture. I'm sorry. You read your own, listen to these people out here with this poor mouth stuff. I want people to experience the best in life. Don't settle for less. But you get it by laying up treasure in heaven. By seed you sow in the earth. Read the text, daughter. I want you to consider the lilies of the field. And I want you to learn thoroughly how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all of his glory, all of his array, excellence, dignity, and grace, did you, hear, did you hear what God just said? God said as clean as Solomon was, he had nothing on my creation. My God, y'all not talking to me. God is the God of color. And I'm glad he is. Because as a man, I don't like black, brown, blue, and gray. I love red, purple. Pinks, yellows. Are you listening? I, I, I love the whole spectrum. Fuchsia. Are you listening? Some of y'all can't say nothing because you a boring dresser. Just so bored, you plain Jane. Are you listening? Don't get mad at me. Get mad at yourself. See? Y'all say what you want. The way you dress. Talk to me up in here. Dignity. I told y'all I was outside of an airport one day. People were lined up to catch the taxi cab. And a, a little fella came, say, hey, sir, you, 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 you trying to get one of those? Uh, come go with me. Now watch this. You can get all paranoid. You know, I don't want to go and somebody going to rob me. Are you listening? The man had limousine attire on. Are you listening? The man took me in the back where all of the limos was and say, I'm going to take you to wherever you want to go. Are you listening? Huh? And it's only going to cost you 
seven day five dollars. But you got water provided for you, a nice clean car. Thank you. Nobody breathing on you. Because y'all know them cabs. They ain't all of that. I said, yeah, I said, daughter, nasty, nasty. Y'all know some of these cab drivers. They got chicken on the front seat. Talk to me up in here. Don't act like every cab. I know I, I remember when we got, I think we went to um, Cancun. Man, we got one of them cabs. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Man, falling asleep. Dude, you got royalty in here. Best you wake up. Why are you listening? And y'all know the cab was falling apart. Are you listening? No AC. Got a, it's already hot out there. Now I got to have the humidity with the window roll on. Y'all might as well say, man, see, I'm talking about, you see, you got to understand. That's what wealth will do. Are you listening? I didn't bat an eye, but I'm going to tell you, I was standing out there with an LV bag. Are you listening? An LV roller bag. Are you listening? That man knew if he came ask me, I wasn't going to be talking about, that's too much. See, that's why some of y'all can't go nowhere. Are you listening? You worried about saving a penny for a rainy day. Are you listening? Some people right now today are, are, are trembling because, well, now the Democrats going to raise taxes. Uh, money coming answers all of that. You don't have to worry about if taxes go up. You have enough money to pay your taxes and somebody else. That's the revelation of money coming. Are you listening? No matter who in office. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Now let's keep reading. Go ahead, daughter. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is alive and green, and tomorrow is tossed into the furnace, will he not so much surely close you? Now, y'all better hear what I'm saying. Can I expand your mind? Did you hear God say those things come in for a season? Right? And the next day they scorched. Are you listening? And you know what God does? Clothe them again. What, what is that saying to you? God wants to so close you, you don't have to be worried about where nothing coming from. God wants you in style too. God know we like good stuff. God is not an out of tune God. Are you listening? God wants you in the best. But the way that you go there is by trusting him. Read the text. O ye of what? O ye of what? O ye of what? Little faith. O ye of what? Little faith has to do with little understanding. You have not even observed the birds, nor the lilies of the field, to see how I operate. They don't even have a system of sowing and reaping. I take care of them. I gave you one and you still stuck. But I decree money coming. Go ahead on read, daughter. Now, watch what he says. Therefore, based upon what I've just shared with you, don't be anxious, don't worry, saying, oh, Y'all caught that? Don't be anxious and don't worry saying. Are you listening? Because the minute you say it, you sign, seal, and deliver the anxiety and the worry that's in your mind. Take no thought for your life saying. We got to learn to put God's word in our mouth. Somebody, how is 2021 going to be? Just like 2020. 
Now, see, if you're listening to me and this pandemic, yes, it has caused many changes, but my life is here with Christ in God. This congregation has been well taken care of. Nobody have died. Are you listening? Those who have had a brief encounter with it were told what to do. And it couldn't stick to them. Are you listening? Connection means something. And as often as we talk about eating right, some of you are still not going to do it. I know people who should be making a shift in what they're eating right now, but they won't listen. It's not going to be till they go get an examination and they say something is out of whack, now they want prayer. Well, I'm going to pray that you eat right. That's my prayer. My prayer going to be that you put that cheesecake down and that English muffin. Oh, Lord. Please, Pastor, please don't touch my Popeyes because I'm going to get something tonight. <laughs> They're going to come back and tell me that I can't breathe. <laughs> come on, read the text, daughter. Read that from the beginning again. Therefore, do not worry and be anxious, saying, what are we going to have to eat? Or what are we going to have to drink? I'm going to tell you what you're going to have, what you're going to, have to eat. Uh-huh. Food with seed in it. And drink a plenty of water. Now, children, at one time, I couldn't say none of this to you. Because if I drink a bottle of water a week, and that is not an exaggeration. The only time I drank water is when I felt like, man, I don't know why, but I just need to drink some water. But my life was full of Arnold Palmer's, that sweet lemonade with sweet tea that I added more sweet to. Are you listening? That's right. When I went to a restaurant, I had four of them. Anybody who went out with me, they know. I started off with one. They put, well, I'll take that water. I don't, I don't want that. Are you listening? My family said, give us some bottled water with lemons. I'm like, they were so boring. Are you listening? What did Dr. Walker want? Arnold Palmer. Then Arnold Palmer soon turned into a Tiger Woods. That's our Arnold Palmer sweet lemonade, sweet tea with grenadine. That's sweet too. That good red thick syrup. Yeah, that. That's the Tiger Woods. Are you listening? All that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had a good salad that I killed. How you kill it, Reverend? With honey mustard dressing. And if it was Copeland's, they had bacon in their honey mustard. And that still wasn't enough for me. Because if it wasn't sweet enough, I'd take a Splenda and put it in there. Are you listening? I did these things. Come to find out that Splenda, your body can't digest. But just like the vaccine they putting out, that's the same thing they did with Splenda. The FDA said Splenda was good for you. Then after people colon got jammed up, now, all oh, 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 your oh, no, see, that's the problem. But when a man of God say, no, you need to watch what you eat. You need to change what you put in that mouth. Cut the TV off. I'm tired of listening to him. Because Christmas next week and my turkey home. And I don't care what he say. I'm from New Orleans, New Orleans. I'm going to have me some gumbo. My crab's already in the freezer. Talk to me. Come on. 
Nobody want to say nothing. One of my daughters told me, they said, look, look, I can't help it, but I'm going to have me some gumbo. Amen. Now, what you laughing for? I know, I know when I said that, there was a bunch of people said that. Had one, one, I'm not going to call a name. They say, I fixed my gumbo. I had to taste the broth. Talk to me. Well, I did what the Bible said this year. I've suffered a while because I didn't have none of it, not nothing. I ate 100% the way I'm eating now, and I feel so good. Are you listening? From no water to 128 ounces daily. And yesterday I broke a record. I did 138. I carry a gallon water jug everywhere I go. Y'all notice I ain't fell out on y'all, huh? I wasn't low on sugar. I was dehydrated. Everything is designed to dehydrate these bodies. And that is why there's so much sickness and disease because we think our bodies are in healthy positions because of being skinny. You can be skinny and full of diabetes and high blood pressure and everything else. You need to get your numbers checked and, and eat right. I don't know why I got on this. But you know, if, if, you know when they say take no thought for your life? You listening to me? That has to do with eating right too. Are you listening? You know certain pains make you wonder if something wrong. Y'all don't want to talk up in here. Okay. Why, Pastor? Because Christmas next week. And I'm going to a party Saturday. I'm telling y'all right now, children, y'all can say what y'all want. People do not fight to come to church, but they fight to go to restaurant. Not understanding that's where a lot of this stuff take off because you got to pull that mask down to eat. There's no ventilation. There's no circulation. But you expose yourself to that just to get a happy meal. Are you listening? All right. And some of y'all are, you, I'm going to tell you why you're kept and covered. Because they got some people up in the morning praying for you. But don't tell me you're praying for yourself because we watch the prayer. There's very few people reporting in how much they pray. Are you listening? Amen. All right, come on, read, daughter. Let me hurry up. Oh, what are we going to have to wear? For the Gentiles, the heathen wish for and crave. And they diligently seek all these things. And your heavenly father knows well that you need all of these things. He already know. Say he already know. Now watch, I'm about to make a statement. Not only does he already know, He's already provided because, all right, come on, parents, work with me here. When you know what your child need, you provide it ahead of time. Is that right? We prepare to send our children to school. If they need uniforms, right, that's purchased in advance. Even if we got to put it on a credit card or borrow from mom or daddy because the child need it and we have to make sure it's on them because if not, they can't go to class. And we don't have time to babysit them because they're baby kids. I'm just having fun. I want you all to know I have great admiration for every um, essential worker who've had to train their kids and mothers and fathers around the world who've had to um, go through virtual learning for their children and virtual work 
And the sad thing about most companies throughout America, especially, they have no compassion on people with family. They act like they can't give them a, a, a break. They want you to sacrifice your children for their job. Because they sold their family out for a check. Are you listening? Don't you be like that. Are you with me so far? God knows, so he provides ahead of time. God sees, so he provides ahead of time. See, God is doing the same thing today that he did yesterday. God knew this stuff was coming, so he raised up Apostle Leroy Thompson Sr. Say, teach my people on wealth. Then out of nowhere, he came and started teaching on health. Are you listening? I happened to be dining with him one day during Prosperity Week. We had cakes, the best cakes. We always provided those from that lady who do them down here. Are you listening? All kind of pies, all kind of stuff. Sitting at the table, gumbo, the best of food from Whole Food. Got up from the table. This is apostolic. Got up from the table. Throw it all out. Look at y'all. Y'all would have been there saying, no, apostle. Just give it to me, I'll take it home. <laughs> Thank you for your enthusiasm. And one day, just throw it all out. God said, we got to eat right. Are you listening? Come on, children. I believe God is speaking strongly because what you think is over is not going to be over for you. It's over for you when you do what I'm telling you to do. Come on, read the rest of the text so I can stop. But seek and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, and then all these things taken together will be given you besides. In other words, you didn't hear nothing else I said tonight. Listen to this. Everything that you need, I don't care if it's a pandemic, an epidemic, a pestilence, a famine. I don't care what the conditions are. God has already provided and made a way. And he's saying, I want you to rest in me. Don't worry about it. Are you listening? Get rid of worry out of your mind. Don't allow the enemy talk to talk to you about being sick. Y'all better hear me. Cancer is running ravenous. Am I right about it? Why is it? Why is it that not only people younger and younger are dying from cancer, but as we get in our golden age, that's what they say. Are you listening? Now here it is, you 50, because they say you're over the hill when you're 40. Are you listening? On top of the hill. But that's a lie. I want you to know, if you take care of your body, your body will take care of you. And taking care of your body means I'm thinking about putting the right stuff in it. Well, I know it's, boy, I know they weren't going to like this message tonight. But God said, I don't want you worrying no more. I've already made provision for your body, which is the temple that I live in. Are you listening? I want it full of health. I want you to know, if you obey me and you begin to eat right, God will remove sickness and disease out your midst. Are you listening? I want you to live long and strong. Are you listening? 
I want you to live long and strong. I don't want you to encounter things that people are encountering in this generation because we failed to train you. We must make decisions in 2021. I said God got great things planned, but that don't mean everybody gonna be a partaker of it because you cannot ignore instructions and be a partaker of. You're gonna have to do this word. Are you listening? So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his way of doing things. And all these things that the heathen and the Gentile seek after, God said, I'm just going to add it to you. Did you hear that? You won't even have to have a thought about it. God said, take no thought, saying, what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, and how am I going to be clothed? God said, I already know you have need all those things. I've already provided them in my word, and I send you people to train you. Receive the training and begin your reigning. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. You can no longer put these things off. God wants you to rule and reign in health and wealth. He wants you to be a blessing to others. Are you listening? He wants to pour you out a blessing. No, he wants to pour you out a blessing. He wants to so bless you that he can pour you out to bless others. We must get out of just being in a receiving mode and be in a distributing mode. Are you listening? Why? Because we have treasure in heaven. And I'm telling y'all right now, I have an account. I have accounts. You have accounts that can never run out. Now, y'all not giving me much response, but I'm telling you this. You have accounts. Backing up your account, you can never run out. If you don't rehearse this to yourself, you're not going where I'm going. Because I talk to myself. Do you? When is the last time you looked in the mirror and say with your rich self? Y'all, now, nah, huh? See? Now, nah, nobody, don't lie. When is the last time you looked in the mirror and say, look at you with your rich self? Huh? When is the last time you looked in the mirror and say, look at you? with your healthy self. Well, you know you ain't gonna do that. Because you looked in the mirror and what the mirror showed wasn't health. Children, all of us should do what the Bible says. Let a man examine himself. Are you listening? Clothes can cover up stuff. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? You can get the stuff bigger. Are you listening? But one thing you can't hide. Y'all know what that is, right? When you what? When you what? Oh, y'all don't want to talk. Now y'all act like you don't take baths. When you go to take a bath, mm hmm Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? Not you, my dear. Not you. Take a look at you. Y'all know how we are. Anybody ever looked in the mirror and was disgusted with themselves? I want, I want some real people in here. Have you ever looked in the mirror in your stomach? was out of whack. Thank you, mama. Thank you, mama. I appreciate it. You ever looked at your stomach and say, how the hell I got here? Huh? Huh? How did I get here? How I let it come on me. Y'all know what we do? 
and I'm closing. You know, that's the end of the message. I'm just sharing this to help those of you to really examine yourself. You want to be healthy, but you look in the mirror and what you see is not the way it should be. Are you listening? Oh, oh, you got the big blouse on. How that's working for you? Because it can hide it, but it's still there. Then you experience things that you don't even want to talk to nobody about. Shortness of breath. Now, come on, talk to me. When is the last time you walked upstairs and didn't know you made it? All right. See, I'm not saying this to be funny or cynical or criticizing. We have allowed people to lie to us. God wants us healthy. And he's made a way for it to happen. I've put food in here so you can eat and maintain. And I'm telling y'all, things it took me years to do. I'm fine now. Huh? Are you listening? Ain't much of a belly. <laughs> Are you listening? You eat right, seem like everything gone. Y'all say, y'all have to say, hey, man, I can. All of the suits I had, everything, even the skinny ones. If you got a skinny suit got to be taken up, you know you done been through a change. Are you listening? Look at mama. Y'all see her? Look at the, uh, um, look at her. Y'all see what has happened to her? That took discipline. I say it took discipline. She don't mind feeding you poking beans, but she wasn't eating them. What we have, y'all have pork and beans with some smoked sausage and a pork chop. Are you listening? What you got? I got a salad. You heard me? I have a salad. Don't you care about us? Yeah, but y'all like to eat that. Are you listening? I'm just telling y'all. And I thank God for my son. Because my son was very instrumental in me making this transition. You know, he said, Daddy, you eat bad. Y'all ever had somebody just flat out tell you you eat bad? Okay, let me tell you. You Negroes in here are eating bad. <laughs> Since y'all ain't want volunteer, I want to help you out, but no, y'all won't be quiet. Y'all know it. Amen. And nobody said amen. That girl eat bad. Thank you, David. Are you listening? But I love you. I don't want to be coming to no hospital or hear no report. But I thank God. Yeah, y'all, like I said, it took, took discipline. And uh, my spiritual father took note, observed my wife. See, he's eagle eyes. He watch it. Now, we had a smorgasbord of food in the back. You know what she go get? A slither of things. How you played up with stuff. I'm just trying to show y'all how I go. Angel. Uh, uh, yeah, you need some drumettes, some sandwiches. Are you listening? All that stuff. What you going to eat? I'm not eating. I'm, I got a salad. You need that. You're going to be hungry. And, oh, you, what, what? So I learned better now. I don't eat all that stuff. Thank God I haven't touched an ounce of meat in over six months. Y'all know that to God, right? Y'all know that to God, right? All right, y'all can act like I'm, I'm not trying to be religious. I'm telling you the truth. It took God. And I had a soul switch. And I thought it's unique. June 1, 6-1 at 61. I made a change. And uh, am I going back to that old way of eating? I can confidently tell you no. Are you listening? I can confidently tell you. The farther I get out, the more I want to stay because I like the way I feel.
feel so good. I feel like, I am like, but I feel like too on the inside. So um, those of you, um, you know, go ahead and sow your tithes offering and, you know, the seeds you want to sow. I, I don't know why the Lord would have me go this way. It seemed like I spent more time talking about eating and different things. I believe it's because he's concerned about our health. And um, you have examples before you. Are you listening? Are you listening? I think my wife and myself <laughs> back to our high school days. Are you listening? High school. High school. Are you listening? And so um, that's a great thing. So if you don't like the way you look, pull out your high school picture. Look at how you used to look. Y'all know how you, am I being real? Have any of you girls looked at a picture of yourself and said, girl, you used to be fine? I, I don't have nobody. I got some sanctimonious people in here. None of y'all ever looked at a picture back then and say, wow, you used to be, you look really good. And you take a look at yourself now and go, girl, what happened to you? Amen. And I'm not just talking about the girls because men, we ain't no, ain't no sense us talking about these girls. Some of our bellies go before us. Are you listening? We look too. Are you listening? And so I want you to start paying attention to your body. Thank God for Colin. Colin, my, my grandson over there, graduate of Columbia. But that boy have always believed in eating right. Are you listening? He cook his own food. Healthy food. Isn't that something? He well beyond his time. That's, that's, a young, that's a young, mature soldier. Are you listening? He says, because of me. Isn't that good to have a grandson to acknowledge that? Are you listening? But, um, I, and I love all of you. I cannot explain to y'all how much I love y'all. But I want y'all to live long and strong and... Um, all of you dealing with sinus issues and these things, they are things to help you. But you got to put the right food in your body. I don't want y'all to get used to taking herbs and not eating right. Are you listening? Because the herbs may deal with it temporarily, but that bad eating going to keep it there. So all of you with sinus conditions, we have a remedy for you. You want out? Dr. Walker got the, I got my blue coat on tonight. Are you listening? So I'm going to walk around here again because I want people to see what help looks like. Are you listening? Are you listening? Do it look like I'm overweight to you? Are you listening? Do it look like I'm overweight to you? No? And y'all definitely don't want me to pull Ray Charles on y'all. Because Ray Charles, when he would meet a woman, he would take his hand and do like that. And if that hand couldn't go around there and he started going up, it got to a certain spot, he say, bring me another one. That ain't the right one. <laughs> Look at y'all. I'm just having a little fun with y'all. Y'all don't like to have no fun. But, um... Um, um, uh, I love my apostle. He looks good. 47 years old. Are you listening? Multi-media that looks good. Him and mom. Why? Because they made a decision. I'm going to teach y'all about health, so we're going to eat right. And that's dominating in the word, eating right. Are you listening? So I thank God. So I know everybody's not going to make the switch. This is for those who want better? Are you listening? You can come off of all medication when you eat right. I said you can. And you can progressively do it. I didn't say just go do it and be dumb. Get yourself checked out. Are you listening? I'm a healthy man. I'm not on nothing. Are you listening? Don't worry about what you think. I'm surprising people every now and then. I ain't telling them. Amen. 
My daughter was doing some stuff. I said, I saw you. She said, what? I said, don't worry about it. <laughs> Can't tell all my business. Are you listening? But I'm driving. I ain't stunning about your mama. She talking about I was this close from the wall. She fussing about a garage. Are you listening? I know exactly what I was doing. And I don't care what she said. And that's why you got to go to the hairdresser. And since you won't mess with little Johnny, take the truck because I'm going to do the car next time. I'm going to be in the mozzie. Okay. Well, glory to God. Blessings. Enjoy a great holiday season. And my word is, don't overspend and overbuy. Stay from up under that pressure. And tell your children, hold on here. Just wait a while. I'm going to be able to get more stuff at a greater price. Are you listening? Now you got to have something under the tree now. Are you listening? Don't go there being Scrooge. You got to get the children stuff because they don't understand all this adult stuff. Amen? So bless your children. Be good to them, but don't be dumb. Amen? Good night. Enjoy your evening.